The polar regions are the regions surrounding the North Pole and the South Pole. The amount of heat the Earth's surface receives depends on a number of factors. These include solar elevation, solar angle, cloud cover, length of day, and to a lesser extent, the length of paths the sun's rays must take through the atmosphere. As the rays pass through the atmosphere, some of the radiation is absorbed, reflected or scattered. The equator is warmer than the UK because the angle at which the sun's rays strike the surface is much higher. More direct illumination causes a more intense amount of heat. At the poles, it is colder because the angle that the sun's rays strikes the Earth is much lower and the intensity of heating is less. Ice dominates the polar landscape, but actually north and south are very different because the north polar region is mostly water, the Arctic Ocean, while the south polar region is mostly land, the continent of Antarctica. There are two main types of polar environment, ice cap environments, where no month in the year has an average temperature above zero degrees centigrade, and tundra environments, where at least one month has an average temperature above zero degrees. In the polar winters, when the pole is facing away from the sun, the sun's rays don't reach that polar region at all. It is dark for 179 days of the year at the North Pole and the South Pole themselves, but at the very edge of the polar regions, it is completely dark for only about one day a year. These conditions mean considerable differences between winter and summer in the polar regions. In the Arctic polar region, summer temperatures can be over 10 degrees centigrade, but winter temperatures can be below minus 50 degrees centigrade. This difference between seasons is called seasonality. Because it is land rather than the sea, Antarctica is much colder all year and summer temperatures are usually only about 2 degrees centigrade. Winters are very cold indeed. The coldest temperature ever recorded was in an Antarctic winter, minus 89 degrees centigrade. Away from the coasts, Antarctica has an average annual temperature of minus 57 degrees centigrade and only around 160 millimetres of precipitation a year. It's technically a desert. In ice cap environments, no plants can grow. As well as being too cold for plants, it is often very dry as well. Each winter, the Arctic Ocean freezes over, but much of it melts again in the short summer. But when ice cap environments are on land, some snow accumulates year after year and turns to ice. Eventually, enough ice accumulates for it to start to flow downhill, a glacier. Glaciers are very powerful at eroding the land under the ice. The landscapes left behind by the glaciers are very distinctive with deep U-shaped valleys gouged out by the glaciers. Tundra environments, where at least one month of the year has average temperature above freezing, do have some vegetation, but it is still too cold and dry for trees. The main things that do grow are moss and lichen. While there may be a thin layer of soil, under that, the ground is frozen solid, called permafrost. In summer, the top level of the soil unfreezes, but the permafrost doesn't. The meltwater has nowhere to go, so the landscape is very marshy and boggy. Okay. Animals that live in the tundra are adapted to the very cold winters and short summers, and to the very low biodiversity. But because they are so well adapted to these conditions, they are vulnerable to any changes. This makes the polar region a fragile environment.